teams line up to take part in the greatest air invasion in history by the first Allied Airborne Army. Americans, British and Canadians make up this Armada for a crossing of the Rhine in the north near Basel. 1,500 planes and gliders haul both men and heavy equipment in this leapfrog over German positions east of the Rhine. This trip is really necessary for victory as the first planes get away. Tow ropes are carefully guided to avoid fatal snarls. It's a gigantic task to get the troop planes and gliders away from their bases in England safely. A job without precedent in military annals. Takeoff instructions go to the transports when the gliders are once on their way. Winston Churchill and General Eisenhower observe progress from the ground near the Rhine. And then the Prime Minister takes a vantage point with Sir Alan Brooke as plane after plane nears the objective. 8th Air Force and British cameramen made these pictures as the men alert for the jump. And this is it. The C-46 plane enables the men to drop from both sides, 18 at a time, speeding up the operation. In a matter of seconds, the sky is filled with billowing parachutes. The glider troops. The pilot releases the tow rope and the sailplane zooms to a landing. With the precision that comes from long planning, the invasion goes forward on schedule. The first wave of troops are out fast to take up their positions as they wait for their other buddies to land. One after another, the planes glide in and some are hit by enemy shells. carrier falls in flames, caught in any aircraft fire. With more split-second timing, artillery opens up. Within eight hours, 4,000 prisoners were rounded up, and every objective was seized, a flying step to victory. Anti-mine tanks clear a path along the Western Front. The flails detonate the mines. The infantry exploits the General Patton's hard-driving third crashes into historic Koblenz from two sides. Right on the heels of the Yanks is Universal's Tom Priestley, who can generally be found where the going is hottest. Many of the scenes in this film are from his camera. The mob up continues, street by street. An officer calls on the Nazis to surrender over the loudspeaker, and the supermen can take a hint when the going is tough. Civilians are quick to follow suit. The war has finally come to their doorsteps. The defense of Koblenz was brief but bitter. However, Patton's Third Army has struck terror into the Wehrmacht. Could be a Hitler hangover, or maybe just a Patton pasting. Another rail center is paralyzed. Looming over captured Koblenz from across the Rhine is the ancient fortress castle of Ehren Breitstein. Koblenz is again in American hands, just 22 years after Allied occupation back again.
This giant French seaplane, powered by six motors, was developed during the occupation of France under the very noses of the Gestapo. The methods by which the plane was built in spite of the Gestapo are as secret as the plane's specifications. This plane represents France's bid for a place in post-war air commerce. France, a pioneer in aviation, stages a comeback in the world of flight. Bastogne in Belgium will long be remembered as the site of the heroic stand of the isolated 101st Airborne Division. Supreme Commander Eisenhower, in the midst of historic battlefields, honors the Screaming Eagles in a ceremony without parallel in war history. It is a great personal honor for me to be here today to take part in a ceremony that is unique in American history. Never before has a full division been cited by the War Department in the name of the President for gallantry in action. Watching the presentation is screen actress Marlena Dietrich. The 101st withstood von Rundstedt's final effort to break the Allied offensive when he endeavored to spearhead an attack through Belgium during the Battle of the Bulge. General Eisenhower himself salutes the heroic division, whose commander, General McAuliffe, turned down the German demand for surrender with the famous word, nuts. Against heavy odds, the Yanks stood firm. From such bravery, victory is forged.